Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn and two days ago I had the pleasure to be on a stream together with talking with famous people in Basement Overlord. We ended up talking about what it's like to be a YouTuber, we ended up talking about how to type other people accurately, we ended up talking about body language and we ended up talking about the different cognitive functions. Yeah, I guess I could say that uh, to me I do typing based on body language, that's one of the biggest things uh, because uh, often when you just met a person it's hard to get that bigger context of who they are and who they are at work and uh, their day-to-day -day life so usually I start with body language and then I start building from there I start uh, seeing okay so how does it fit this fit together uh, what are the patterns available and well uh, okay. how do people work it's interesting because I don't think I really use a lot of body language what sort of cues do you look for with body language well, it's all about how you smile, how you gesture, how you look, how you talk. It's about your voice. It's about uh, pretty much everything. Because, you know, when you have a cognitive function, that kind of becomes your consciousness, how you experience the world. Mm -hmm. so, well, an ENTP would uh, often do a lot of grabbing gestures with their hands, and they tend to do like this. They pick up information and patterns around them. They go uh, this, and then that, and then this, and they tend to weigh and balance, and they tend to have like this these cool, precise finger movements, like they are <laughs> testing, seeing maybe like this, maybe like that. So they, they do a lot of calibration, you could call it. With I almost them. viewed ENTPs as like the. I, I read somewhere that they um, don't seem like they're aware sometimes of their own bodily postures. Like they'll be sitting like, like almost like this, just like in this very awkward pose while they're in their T I N E like theory, you know, like not preaching, but debating almost. And it's like, they forget that they're supposed like they would feel better if they sat more like this or something. Yeah. But maybe there's a rationality to that. I was looking at the death note just recently because it's coming out on Netflix and uh, the character there, L, and uh, I think he's an NTP for sure. Uh, okay. he, sat with, he sat with his knees up like this all the time and he said it increased his brain power somehow. <laughs> <laughs> so he has... <laughs> I, I like that like rationalization almost. That's what, that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually put a stool in front of my chair here so I can put my knees up like this. <laughs> So, and then what is the brain power? I don't think it increases my so brain power. So you're not even wearing pants. I'm wearing shorts. It's warm here in Los okay. Angeles. And it's what they're saying, what they're doing, whatever. And then I try to form a conclusion, and I usually run it by them. You know, run it by them. Like, what do they think? Hmm. And I try to get them to confirm some of the observations that I have. Then, like, I I noticed you do this thing, like. Like, do you value this type of thinking or something like that? And they, they generally try to like. I think Basement Overlord says something good before about uh, how he uh, tends to ask people about his observations to make sure. And I feel like that's very important when you type other people. You shouldn't just give a label on them. Uh, you should uh, get them to find out through their own reasoning skills what type they are, but you should give them the help and the tools to do so. You can like help them by giving them directions and how to do it. Because I feel bad about just slamming a type on someone. I think I generally try to be pretty reserved in my assessments too, because a lot of, uh, a lot of things I notice is that people don't like being told their type, for example, especially if they already have a type that they think they are and I mean, I mean obviously that's the case if, if I'm going around being like hey don't worry I actually know you more than you you know yourself I I don't actually do that I think I know the theory more than they might know the theory for example but I'm not saying you like if, if I go around saying like I know your type better than you do people usually get offended by that naturally and so like I that's why I usually don't like to like do that for example if someone asks me questions then i give them answers on the theory like hey is this ti i'm like yeah then they can figure it out for themselves you know Eric, yeah exactly ask, it should be respectful how many people ask you questions about typing stuff i mean uh outside, i get outside of youtube every day 
even outside of um outside of strobe world outside of youtube <laughs> oh, I, I don't uh, think there is actually I, i'm not sure <laughs> I've uh, gotten, um, yeah, people do ask me about it. Uh, they know they know I'm the psychology guy <laughs> in a way. So they do come to me about things like that, uh, especially when they are wondering about, like most people that come to me are like parents wondering about their kids. And that's those are the most curious. Well, that's where I actually find it most useful actually is in assessing people's kids at work. Cause I do coach debate as a job and um, I have parents who sometimes have expectations for their own kids They get frustrated to see that their child isn't behaving like the NTP child, which is to say, spitting it right back at me, right? So it's like if, if I'm in class and I try to explain some shit to NTPs, they can spit it right back at me, but NTJs need to, sit, need to write it down and sit with it for a day or so, you know? And then they come back and they understand it just as well but they understand it from a different learning modality and i gotta explain to some parents that the reason your kid's not as good at improvising is because they got a different kind of brain you know it's like they don't they're not ntps so they're not going to be as quick on their feet doesn't mean they can't be just as good as debaters they can be some of the best debaters ever are intjs but it takes them longer to get there it's, it's a different it's a di different kind of learning curve or something. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think introverts need more time overall to mature into like what they want to do and uh, what their big thing is. But when they find it, they tend to do it really well. They speed up later on in age. Yeah, like I definitely feel like a lot of TJ types, I know this from my dad, for example, they just acquire a body of information, factual information over time. And so, so as they age, they're just acquiring more and more factual information about the world to the point where they become just these very knowledgeable people that you can look to for answers and how the world works. Whereas some types like me, I feel like I'm just constantly refining information and understanding that I, that I already know. And, and sometimes I'm almost forgetting to like look outside and oh, the world is actually this way, not the way you think it is. I don't know. There's a sense that there's a lack of moving forward onto onto what's the point of this, you know? Or sometimes there's conversations that seem just to be about exchanging experiential data with one another and I go, okay, well, and what is the purpose of having this conversation? And, and then there seems to be a, uh, what do you call it, a disconnect. Yeah, I think the biggest disconnect you'll feel there is a disconnect in uh, that feelers get their purpose from different things than thinkers. Uh, I think feelers get uh, a stronger sense of purpose from personal sharing and personal discussions and that uh, private perspective, uh, where thinkers tend to value more objective perspectives, higher informal perspectives, uh, things that are more true to everyone rather than just true to the individual person, I think. Yeah, and also I'd like to add that I think a lot of this comes down to uh, FI users versus FE users. Because I think a lot of times, or I guess FI versus TI, TI sort of wants to generalize these experiences to make everyone, like collect everyone under a unified view of the world. Whereas I think a lot of FI users, especially FI dominance, are like, this is what makes me feel good you know, agreeable. This is what makes me feel bad. These are all these things that make me feel different things. And, um, you know, I'm sort of aware of the fact that that's not true for everyone. But at the same time, I'm also aware of the fact that so, a lot of times my own feelings can actually guide, be a guiding force into how other people should behave or something like that, you know. Yeah, and they will often tell you, just because I feel this way doesn't mean you have to feel this way or you don't have to like what I like. I feel like. Yeah, especially like INFPs because they just don't like enforcing these things on other, onto other people, I think. Yeah, I feel like as a feeling judging type, I'm all about uh, like the coherence of all these values and all these opinions and how everything fits together and how everyone's beliefs fit into this bigger system. I feel far much more ideological in my uh, how I perceive values. Uh, 
and uh, so much more about organizing. And if they like that, uh, then I like that. And it's, uh, then I, I don't know, bringing things together in a sense. It's uh, like how to merge everyone's unique feelings into a way that everyone can enjoy them almost or something like that. Yeah. Well, I think that sometimes it's almost like, uh, you know, how there's working memory. I feel like uh, judging, thinking judging and feeling judging has higher working memory in a way. Because I feel like uh, thinking judging types can process more different logical options at the same time and uh, build them into a system. Feeling judging types can process values, multiple values, and hold multiple things true at the same time and see them all together. But the feeling perceiving types, they can only do one thing at a time. Do I like that? No. Do I like that? Yes. Do I like that? No. In a sense. So they. TPs too. Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Does this make sense? Yeah. And so. For somebody like me with FI in the polar slot, uh, I I don't trust FI. If somebody, I, I don't know if somebody likes me. I can't tell how much they like me, what they put it means. I I just I know I want that badly, but I don't I don't exactly I can't tell or something. I'm blind about it. I mean, it's my blind spot. So um, I don't know where I was going with that. Just musing. Any other thoughts on this topic about official topic of typing people out in the world where we get kind of kind of meandered a bit as this is as this is my want? I bet you're much more. Well, I know you are. I've seen the, your videos. You know, you're generally more on topic than this. Uh, welcome to talking with fans, people. We're, we meander a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely more need more than of that. I think more O O T. <laughs> Well, there's plenty of any e here, okay? You're never going to run out of any e around here. <laughs> so anyway, uh, thank you for watching, everybody. And we're going to go on to the next topic now in a separate video. I think that you have to dare to be a little sensational sometimes because conflict also makes things more interesting all the time, so... Yeah, I will say that when my um, subscriber rate tanks, I'm going to start drama with both of you guys so that it gets the pot <laughs> stirring and then people check out my channel and subscribe to me more. That's a tactic that I know is is, is useful. <laughs> well, you could probably start drama with me. I'm pretty easy to start drama with. I... All right. Have you um, been to any YouTube live events? I, no, I haven't been to any. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even know they were a thing. Like, what is that? They are very secret. Google is very secretive about things like this. Uh, they, oh, send they, get... me, they send them, them out to, uh, to you when you have 1,000 subscribers. Ooh, ooh okay. What is, so what is this YouTube uh, live event? Well, um, you get to meet and mingle with other YouTubers. And I uh, guess when I came there and I started introducing myself to the other people, they were like, what is that? <laughs> Typology? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? Like a fucking like, hairspray? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Everyone else does uh, prank videos or yeah. training or workout videos or gaming or You got to throw in uh, the, the, the niche um, <laughs> beauty channels, the beauty channels, you know? Oh yeah, there was a beauty channel as well there. How to put on makeup? <laughs> you learn any tips that host Eric might approve of? I, I could use I could use some makeup it. tips. <laughs> you could use. I feel like you should like trim up your beard or something. You look pretty badass if you like did some stuff, like, some designs in your beard. I just trimmed it not that long ago. <laughs> <laughs>